In this video we have one rational function to graph. In a previous video I went through how to find the asymptote for a uh, rational function, the vertical, the horizontal, and the oblique or slanted asymptote. So you can pause the video now if you want and see if you can work it out and then I'll come back and work it out for you. I've done several videos on graphing rational functions, gone through the uh, technique that I teach my students. One thing you want to do is analyze the function just by looking at this particular one. You can pretty much give the behavior of the graph. We talked about how to find the horizontal asymptotes. Notice that the degree of the numerator is zero because it's a constant. So this would be like nine X to the zero. The degree of the denominator is actually two if you square this out you get an x squared so if the uh, degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero which is your x-axis so that's a given we mentioned also that the in the last video if the if there's a value that makes the denominator zero but not the numerator then that leads to a vertical asymptote so here we, we can see that I put it through where the x is, I get 0, 3 minus 3 is 0, squared is still going to be 0. So that's where the function is undefined. So that's where you have the vertical asymptotes. There's no slant. The only way we can have a slant asymptote is if the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator. Now it's easy to find the y-intercept. For functions you just replace the x by zero and whatever number you get that's going to be your y-intercept if you get say a zero in the denominator when you do that say you had a function like one over x you place the x by zero you get one over zero it's undefined so in that case you have no no y-intercept so you can see here then we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero because three gives me zero in the denominator, but not the numerator. X equal three is a vertical asymptote. So let's write down that information then. You place the X by zero. And this gives me negative three squared is nine. And I have a nine in the numerator. So nine divided by nine is one. So the Y intercept is at zero one. Let me write the function here. Again, replacing the x by 0, I get 0 minus 3 is negative 3. And that's where we had 9. 9 over 9 gives me 1. So that's your y-intercept. Now, a rational function, if there's no x in the numerator, you can't have an x-intercept. There's no values that are generate 0. Because how, how do we find the, the x-intercept? We replace the y or the f by zero. And then we want to solve for the solve for x over here. What value of x gives me zero for this rational function? Well, because there's no x in the numerator, there's no value that does that. So I have no x intercept. The graph does not cross the x axis. Vertical asymptote we said is x equal to three. Okay, that's the number that makes the denominator zero, but not the numerator. And then the horizontal, write it over here, the horizontal asymptote, asymptote is y equals zero because the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. I also know that this graph is strictly above the x-axis because in the numerator I have a nine and the denominator I have x minus three squared. So no, no matter what number I plug in for x, because I'm squaring it, I'm always gonna have a nine over a positive number. So for any value I plug in for x, the y value is always positive. So the graph stays strictly above the x-axis. Now the technique that I teach my students, if you have a, ra a rational function on a number line, plot all the values that make the numerator or the denominator zero. 
Well, there's no x in the numerator, so there's no values that make the numerator zero, and the only value that makes the denominator zero is a three. So in this case, I only plot a three. I you plot these because the numbers that make the numerator zero lead to the, or are the, x-intercepts, and the values that make the denominator zero lead to the vertical asymptotes. So that's where you get to have a break in the graph, where the graph will be will cross the x-axis uh, for those values that make the numerator zero, because those are x-intercepts. But in this case, we don't have that. So here, all I have to do is look at numbers to the right of three, say four or five, and if I plug it into this function, the f value is always, or the function is always positive. If I plug in negative numbers, or numbers to the left of three, I should say, say a two or a one or a zero, no matter what I plug in, I plug in a negative four, because you're squaring it, it's always positive. So from this information, I know that the graph stays strictly above the x-axis. So this is analyzing the graph. Vertical asymptote at x equal three, horizontal at y equals zero. It crosses the y-axis at zero, one. There is no x-intercept, so it doesn't cross the x-axis. And the graph approaches the, the uh, horizontal asymptote y equals zero, which is your x-axis, and the vertical asymptote x equals three. Let's clear this. So we have no slant asymptote. This information is just filled in. So let's go down, and here we have it then. You're using the information we have. This is here's your vertical asymptote here, x equals three, and zero one. And let me write the function here again y or f of x, so this is 9 over x minus 3 squared. So the graph stays above the x-axis, but it passes to this point right here. So notice what happens if I plug in a, uh, a 0, we, should, we did that already, 0, and this is square here. Minus 3 squared is 9. 9 over 9 is 1. So it passes through this point right here. And it, it approaches the vertical asymptote. So what happens if I plug in a number, let's say plug in at uh, a 2. 2 minus 1. I'm sorry, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. And you squared, you get 1, and that's 9. So if I go to 2, it goes up 9. So notice if I, as I get closer to the vertical asymptote, the value gets larger. So this, this graph is going up like this. And as I go to the left of 0 or over here, you can, you, can, you can test a few values, but it gets smaller. The value of y gets smaller and smaller. So this is actually coming down this way. But it never gets to 0. As the value of x gets smaller and smaller, as I know, and those we introduce numbers, plug in numbers on the left side over here, negative one, negative two, negative three, and so forth. This number in the bottom gets larger and larger, so this nine over that number is going to get smaller. And notice if I go to the right side of the vertical asymptote, so one, two, three, then we go to four. Four minus three is one squared is one. 9 divided by 1 is 9, so if I go to 4, I'm, it goes up. As I get closer and closer to 3, it gets larger. So this graph is going, exploding over here on this side. But if you pick values larger than 3, it gets smaller and smaller. So your graph kind of looks like that. And it's really symmetrical here. So I should make it, just to make it a little bit... Uh, or a little bit more symmetrical, something like this. And that's the graph of this particular one. We'll have a few more uh, just to illustrate how to graph it with the asymptotes. Do another one later on with a oblique or slant asymptote. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.